This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett and it is the Ramble and we go on until midnight tonight. Eastern Daylight Time, so wherever you are in the world, accommodate for that. I know that right now, girlfriend's in China, and it's 10 o'clock in the morning, or 5 past 10. So, hello to girlfriend, and a little bit later, we'll be uh, talking with her in Hong Kong, okay? But that's a little bit later. Oh, yeah, look, we have some new logos now. I've changed some of the artwork. Gee, the work I get done around here. Anyway, we got a guest. Let's go to him. Ladies and gentlemen, during the next half hour or 25 minutes, let, let's hope that nobody tries to call me. I should just turn off my phone, shouldn't I, Larry Bubbles? Yeah, Brown? that might work. Huh? That might work. That always it? works. Yeah. Okay. It's off now. There we go. Anyway, how you doing, Larry? Doing great, man. Now, I, uh, yeah. Just got back from Las Vegas with our old friend Rob Schneider. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bubs, you're a comedian. I just I just flew back from Las Vegas, <laughs> and <laughs> boy, are my arms tired! Right? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, who we, had the joke of, of the United where the guy? Remember they dragged the guy off the United flight? And some I, some open mic I saw. I, I just flew in on United, and boy, are my arms broken! <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I was in Vegas with Rob Schneider, who is, uh, boy, he is so, I, I knew he was well known, but he took me out to Whole Foods one day because he's a real health nut and uh, yeah. absolutely got mobbed. It was like I was with the Beatles. It, it, isn't, just, isn't, isn't that strange? Because under normal conditions, Rob Schneider would not be that kind of, get that kind of reaction. But I think part of it has to do with so many people have done jokes about him that he's become a celebrity in that way. Like Family Guy savages him. There's always some Rob Schneider joke here and there. And they've always bothered me because I know Rob and I like Rob. He's a nice guy. Oh, the greatest guy. And he's he's done... Uh... I think just being in movies is kind of big to people. He's done a ton of movies. He's done a lot of popular, you know, pop films. Like he was yeah. in all of Adam Sandler's films. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and uh, I th and of course Deuce Bigelow. You know, very popular pop picture. Let me put it this way: We were talking last week about various actors, and I don't think if Emil Yannings showed up at a supermarket, anybody would recognize him. <laughs> yeah. Probably because he's been dead for like fifty, sixty years. But uh, nevertheless, they, 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 it wouldn't be that kind of recognition. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I felt like I was with the Beatles. I was just, I was just taking people's phones and taking pictures for them. It's, uh, it was wild. By the way, it, it, let me mention Emil Yannings for just a second. German actor, World War Two came along. He sided with Hitler. Uh, but he was he. Oh, he did. He, yeah, but he won an Academy Award for a, I think a German film or might have been an American film. He won the first Academy Award for Best Actor, and he what was one. Of, he was one of the best actors in the world and made one of what I consider one of the best films ever made in the German film era. And the Germans were the best at making movies in those days. And he did a film called The Last Laugh, and it's a silent film, and it's all about a about a guy who you know is the is the guy who meets you at the door at the hotel and he's got his mm -hmm. uniform and everything and he opens your door to your car and he takes great pride in his job and great pride in his uniform that goes with the job. And then one thing leads to another and they fire him and I mean his life goes downhill from there. And at the end, of course, it's called The Last Laugh because he gets the last laugh. But it is just... As a silent film, it doesn't even have, you know, it doesn't even have those intertitles at all. It didn't need them. The whole film is that good. And it just you just sit there riveted watching this performance. I'll have to see guy. that. I absolutely love silent films. Yes. You know, people don't watch silent films. They say, I love movies. Well, do you watch silent films? No. Well, then you don't love movies because there were some great silent films. 
There, we'll get back to Rob Schneider in a moment. Uh, um, I got into silent. How did I get into silent films? Uh, Might have been through Shecky. I mean, Shecky said you ought to see this, and then I watched that, and then I started watching another, and then I, st- I started. What I started watching a lot of was Buster Keaton silent films, which were amazing. But oh, I know what made me love silent films. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Carl Davis, and uh, he does mu- music for silent films when they do them on the BBC yeah. or, you know, when Kevin Brownlow and David Gill for years were restoring silent films, and then he would do the musical score for them. And when you've got a musical score that goes a big symphonic, like you would hear in New York City if you went to a movie, a big symphonic orchestra playing the music to a film, it just changes the whole feel of the film, and you suddenly realize why silent films were so great. Normally, they put some like rinky-dink piano track behind it, or organ, or worse than that, some kind of nebulous music, so they just have some sound on the soundtrack. But when it's specially made for that film, it becomes a wedding of the music and the, and, and the film, and it's extraordinary. And to prove this point, I took Marjorie and went with Shecky out to the Oakland, what's that big theater in Oakland? The Oakland Paramount. And we went and oh, saw yeah. Napoleon with Carl Davis directing a symphony orchestra. Oh, I know. Uh, I think I got tickets for my, my father went to that. He said it was unbelievable. Yeah, and it is. Are you ready, folks? Something like six and a half hours long. You say, well, how do they do that? Well, they took a couple of breaks, and they took a dinner break in the middle of the film. They took about an hour and a half off, so you go out and have dinner and come back. And Marjorie, after it was over, said, that was amazing. I never saw movies done like that before. And to have the symphony orchestra playing the music, I mean, it was just just breathtaking. Uh, And plus, at the end of the film, Abel Gans, who was the director of the film, famous silent film director, um, did a thing where all of a sudden the single screen opens up to three screens, essentially, but it's wide, right? And mm-hmm. it's, it's battles and things like that. He took three cameras like Cinerama did in later years. They weren't synchronized that as well as, you know, they did with Cinerama. But they, they all of a sudden, the, scre- the curtains open up and here is this, big panorama and the music and everything you leave there you go and girlfriend looked at me and go i thought i was going to be bored i thought she sleeps in movies she sleeps in good movies she didn't (laughs) she didn't fall asleep once watching napoleon six hours oh wow six and a half (laughs) and you know something it went by so fast i i wanted my money back you know i mean it just it just whizzed by because the film is so well done and so well told. It opens up with uh, Napoleon as a kid having a snowball fight. But it's like a little mini war with kids. I mean, it, it's just an amazing film. Uh, if you ever get a chance to see it, it actually, there's a version of it out, uh, if you can get it from Britain, where the, I think they took the, had Carl Davis do the score and they actually made a video of it. They put it on video, and uh, it, that's the way to watch it. You can't see it here in America with the Carl Davis score because, you ready for this? Francis Coppola, years ago, decided he wanted to take the movie Napoleon and let his father do a score for it, and then they played it live in San Francisco. I think you may remember that. That's the one my father went to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's not the one. Francis Coppola's father's score sucks. Okay. Okay. But Coppola had the rights to the film in America. So they they had to get permission to get Carl Davis to play Napoleon at the Paramount from Coppola, who gave him his one time permission to do it. And then they went back to Europe, and in Europe, he didn't have any control over there. They put it on video and everything like that, and you can buy it like from foreign sources, but you can't get it here in the United States because of fucking uh, uh, Coppola and his dad, who is long dead now, but, you know, uh, did the music for it. I, I didn't even want to go see it with Cabola doing it. So anyway, it was, yeah. it, but this Carl Davis, so I started seeing movies this way, 
And there are some films that if you ever get to see them, The Big Parade is one of the best war films ever made. Uh, Wings, which is the first picture ever to win an Academy Award. Uh, uh, Greed, which is a long gone film by, uh, by uh, Eric von Stroheim. I'm sorry, folks, if these are names you don't know, but you really should know them. Uh, von Stroheim was his eccentric director hated by the studios because he wanted everything his way. He wound up in, if you want to know who Eric Stroheim is, uh, he was, Eric von Stroheim, he was, he played the, the butler in Sunset Boulevard, directing, <laughs> yeah. directing Gloria Swanson coming down the stairs, right? Mm -hmm. But he, and he was also, but he was her director in silent films, von Stroheim and did a film with her that never got finished. I'm trying to remember the name of it right now. And it became some of the footage they show of the old Gloria Swanson in a movie. But anyway, be that as it may, where was I? Oh, yeah, he did a film called Greed. Greed's, Greed, when it was in its final cut, was seven hours long. Oh, and Irving Thalberg so hated him that he fired him off the picture shortened it to two and a half hours and supposedly threw away the stuff he wasn't going to use. Oh. And, and, and the, the holy grail of film today is a completely restored version of greed. And there isn't one to be had. They have done it on TCM where they took the parts that were taken out and then they, they um, uh, played the music and ran the intertitles with stills from what they thought were the scenes for those those uh, uh, parts of the film. Uh, but it, it uh, uh, it's never been restored, really, to it, where you see it. And it was filmed in San Francisco, believe it or not. So you see San Francisco and Oakland in those days. Wow. You see the train going into Oakland. When's the last time you saw the train going into Oakland from San Francisco? I think they put the train on a something and then it went across and then it picked up on the other side. But anyway, it it's just one of the greatest films ever made and it's all about greed. And um it it, it I sat there watching it with the Carl Davis score just gasping at how great this movie is and it is I think if you go looking for it available out there somewhere. Oh. You know. So anyway, that's yeah. you know. So we we must be the only two people in the country that still like silent. I for some reason I think I can follow them better. I dialogue, I've kind of got ADD and I get distracted. But silent films, I just really focus on them. Yeah, but you know, there's something about silent films that make them a little more difficult. But I'm glad you you don't find them difficult. And that is, you have to watch them closely, because no. you can't take avert your eyes from the screen. You might miss something. You might miss an intertitle. You might miss uh, an action or s s something that's happening between one person or another. With sound, you don't have to be looking at the film. You can look down every now and then and around, and you're still, you're still getting the movie. This is why they started serving popcorn in films only when sound films arrived. Because you couldn't, really? eat, you couldn't eat popcorn... And watch the movie at the same time because you put your hand down to look where you're picking up the popcorn. So anything that would divert your eyes from the screen, they didn't. Uh, they didn't do in those theaters in those days. Pretty interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, uh, the, the silent films were wonderful. Just wonderful. I, I, I think there's a. I think there's a theater in L.A. that still shows silent films. I could be wrong. But. Well, if you go to the San Francisco. Silent Film Festival. Uh, they will show you films in with sound, and I saw two films, two comedies there, that I, you know, comedies like Buster Keaton and so on. Keaton was wonderful, but I didn't realize how wonderful until I saw it with an audience. And they showed um, uh, what was the one where the house falls down? Steamboat Bill Jr. <laughs> Steamboat, uh, Steamboat Bill Jr. with an orchestra, okay, and an audience. Uh -huh. See, because all these silent films, you sit at home, watch them, and if you're lucky, you might get somebody to watch it with you, you know. And with an audience, all of a sudden, you notice there were laughs in this film you never noticed before. 
because the audience is starting to laugh uncontrollably over stuff, and it's stuff that when you watched it just by yourself went by, and you went, oh, that's nice, you know. Uh, I mean, there's one joke where he's he's in a, a store trying on hats, and he goes, no, no, no. And then he puts on a hat that was the, the typical hat that, you know, the crushed hat that, uh, that, that Buster Keaton wears, and he looks mm-hmm. at it and goes, oh, no, and throws it away. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it, 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 there was just something about silent films. I saw him... Um, uh, oh, what's her name? Oh God, the sexiest woman in film. I'm trying to remember her name now. Um, it, Clara Bow. It, Clara Bow. Watched it with an audience and an orchestra. What a great film! Mm-hmm. What a just a great comedic performance by this woman. And by the way, one of the sexiest ever on screen. She, in fact, was the biggest star in the world. And at 24. Couldn't get a job. <laughs> you know, it was a, what happened. What happened was she the sound came in, and it wasn't that sound ruined her because she kind of had this little Brooklyn cute accent. You know, it was okay, but she was so afraid of the microphone. At one point, she was known to when they stopped filming to go to the, the microphone was hanging right over her head, stand up and start hitting it till her hand bled. Jesus. I mean, she hated sound and sound, and then they, they she so she became a real drama queen, and the studios didn't want anything to do with that. So she um, she left film for a while. And then she came back and did some sound films. Her last couple of sound films were great, great films. But she finally just went to the desert with her husband Rex Bell. Why do I remember all these names and I can't remember other names? You're fond of knowledge. Rex Bell and went and lived in the desert for the rest of her life. I think maybe outside of Vegas, and or maybe it was in Arizona. And her husband, Rex Bell, became a politician. He he had been a movie actor, and uh, then she died in relative obscurity uh, in uh, in 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 Los Angeles. She had moved back to L.A. and lived in one of those little homes, you know, uh, and uh, she died. Uh, watching a film with Gary Cooper, who was one of her lovers in real life, and Victor Fleming, who was another one of her lovers in real life. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, it's it, it, there's a de- documentary done by uh, Kurt Cobain's wife. What's her name? Um, see? Um. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. anyway, uh, it was done by uh, Hugh Hefner. He paid for a lot of documentaries about women in film and he did the one on Clara Bow and I remember at the end of it and I still watch it every now and then I start crying really? yeah I mean the woman was the biggest star in the world washed up at 24 24 wow you know and and by the way she didn't mind that because she didn't Hollywood didn't like her because she was just a kid from Brooklyn with this Brooklyn accent, you know, and she liked to stay at home and hang out with friends and not go to the big Hollywood parties, you know. Clara Bow, if you ever get to see her, folks, sexiest woman ever to grace a screen. Uh, cute, beguiling, whatever. Anyway, let's get back to you now. And uh, we started with Rob Schneider and wound up with Clara Bow. That's how conversation. Yeah, that was a good uh, loop I, there. Have I been talking too much? I mean, I'm supposed to be interviewing you. <laughs> no, yeah. you're uh, you're fascinating. I love to listen to this. Well, I call you up because I I want to uh, you know uh, talk about stuff, and you you talk well with me. And I, if you were here, you'd be a co-host of the show every night. You know. Well, you know so much about movies; it's incredible. Yeah. So, well, anyway, well, I'm forgetting a but lot. But like of yeah, Keaton, though, you're saying Keaton was a, that's really great humor because it. I mean, it holds up today. Well, he was so. his his humor and his comedy was smart, universal. It, yeah, and it was smart. Uh, also, I mean, it, there were smart acts and there were stupid acts. I never liked the Three Stooges. Couldn't stand the Three Stooges. Do you like the Three, <laughs> three Stooges? I, you know, I, when I see, I, if I don't see them for about five years, I'll laugh hysterically for about five minutes, and then it really starts to wear on me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I loved Laurel and Hardy. And Laurel and Hardy were smart. 
the best. And you know what Lenny Bruce said about Laurel and Hardy? And it, it, it was quite a revelation for me. He said that he liked Laurel and Hardy because they were the only duo act, comedy duo act, that didn't act in a homosexual manner. That, you know, uh, people like Bud Abbott and Lucas Stella, he'd jump in uh, Abbott's arms. You know, in, <laughs> he was yeah, a girl. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, 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 but he said between Laurel and Hardy, there was no gay inference at all. You know, there was no homosexual overtone. Mm -hmm. uh, even though he knew that Abbott and Costello weren't gay, you know, Martin and Lewis, same thing. It was a kind of a homosexual overtone, and I think it had a lot to do with straight man and comedian. That's an interesting observation. Yeah. Laurel and Hardy, who was the straight man? There wasn't one. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was no straight man at all. And uh, it was just simply what made that act work is there was one guy who was really dumb, Stan Laurel, and he knew it. He knew he was not the sharpest knife in the drawer. On the other hand, you had Hardy who thought he knew everything and was just as stupid as Laurel was. <laughs> you know? And that made for one of the greatest duo acts in history. It, it, it can't yeah. be beat. There are Laurel and Hardy films that are just amazing. I mean, the, the best one is when they're hauling up a piano, up uh, 100 flights of stairs. Um, I, ju I just saw that the other day. Yeah, it was a Great film. Just a great film. Yeah. But anyway, let's get back to Rob Schneider. <laughs> So you, <laughs> so you, so Schneider's mob. He uh, he's one, he's like Robin. He just when he people come out, he's just so nice. Takes pictures, very friendly with everybody, and that's uh, that's great. He is, you know, of all the guys that I know, you know, he's one of the ones who still every now and then stays in contact. You know, yeah, he loves you. So yeah, good and, guy. And in fact, good I got to get your number from him because I got I got to call him again and get him on this show to do it because uh, I, I want to do a. He has a he has a Skype camera, so we can actually visually, visually talk to him. But mm -hmm. but anyway, um, so you were in Vegas, and what were you there for? Uh, he was just working a couple of nights and had me open for him, so uh, that was fun. And then uh, getting ready to leave Monday, and he called me and he said, "Meet me at the lot minutes. We just got invited to the Jerry Lewis Memorial." Oh, I see. Okay. So I said, can't miss this. So we ran over there, and uh, a memorial for Jerry Lewis on Labor Day, which was his big day. So, Yeah. And you know it's a Vegas memorial. We walk in. The first person I see in a suit is Carrot Top. <laughs> it was hosted by Tony Orlando, who looked like he weighed about 400 pounds, but did a good job. And uh but you, would, but, but, but you would think that if in Vegas you were holding a comedy uh, tribute to, you know, Jerry Lewis, a memorial to Jerry yes, Lewis. Yes, with, with cocktail uh, waitresses well, that were it, half it, nude. It was if, a classic Vegas memorial. It, it, well, that's not bad, okay, because at least he did Vegas, and it's Vegas, okay. Yeah. But Tony Orlando hosting it? Tony Orlando hosted you were expecting uh, the biggies, weren't you? We didn't get the biggies. We got uh, Dane Cook came up. Oh, God. Uh, well, he's washed up already. Go ahead. Uh, who else? You know, <laughs> Pat Cooper was there. Oh, Pat Cooper Somebody could be. Pat Cooper tried to be. introduce me to him. And in the middle of the introduction, Pat just stops and goes into a joke. Like he's performing like he's on, well, on stage. So He's an old guy. That's what they do. Uh, but he, uh, Pat Cooper, really very funny guy. It's funny, yeah, yeah, but out of his mind, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, crazy. So who else was there? The, who you, else you, was you, there? Suddenly, uh, I got so depressed. They started showing the uh, videos from the 76 telethon, and I, I actually remembered watching that. I got really sad, and I had to leave for a, a little while. So Why were you sad? I missed some of the speakers. Why were you sad? And it just reminded me, of God, I watched that when it happened, and now like 40 years have gone by, and, I just, and now Jerry's dead. It just got me very depressed. So, you know, this passage of time really gets to me. Yeah. yeah, it's too bad. It's too bad. Well, you know, I mean, come on, Jerry Lewis, 81. What was he, 81? Uh, 91. 91, excuse me, 91. Uh, you know, good, good life. 
you know. And then when I was watching this, I that's what I thought about you. I just wondered, God, I wonder if Alex had ever interviewed Jerry Lewis. Never, never interviewed him in my life, but he sang You'll Never Walk Alone to me on the telethon. Oh, because he was mad. Yeah, that's right. He was mad at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he had heard that a disc jockey in, San, in New York had said uh, uh, that he was I, I didn't think he was a very good comic anymore uh, or very good performer anymore. And he said, I hope this is good enough for that disc jockey. And then he went and sang You'll Never Walk Alone. And I'm looking at people around the room going, <laughs> son of a bitch is singing You Never Walk Alone to me. <laughs> um. But, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, um, I, I love, listen, I, I talked about him quickly, and then, I, then we got to go here. But that I always, I, I grew up loving Jerry Lewis. He was my favorite. In fact, uh, the first name I ever used was Jerry Bennett, you know, using Jerry. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Invoking his name. And Alex came about because of my father's name. But, you know, I mean, uh, I thought he was terrific. And then I said, as you grow up, you mature out of Jerry Lewis. Okay, you know. Yeah, cause I loved him as a kid. Then I look at some of the stuff I look at now. My God, that was awful. But yeah, yeah, um, you know. And and I talked about the time that he saved my life. I went to see a Jerry Lewis movie when I wanted to commit suicide once, just to yeah, have something right, to do. Yeah. And 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 I and I learned the the healing properties of comedy by by going to that film and realizing that I was about ready to kill myself, and I'm laughing at this guy and I said that's what I want to do all my life I want mm -hmm. to make people laugh you know that's the best medicine you can give hey listen we've run out of time Lawrence it flew by and I, I love I talking about the movie I couldn't do all this yesterday because I was sick and today I'm well, you, still you bounce back I'm not 100% but I, you know talking with you I feel like going out and <laughs> I, I don't know go, we'll go out and see an Emil Jennings movie yeah, let's do an Emil when you, if you ever come to New York, I have the last laugh here. We'll watch it, okay? I'd love that. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and adorable Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for having me, man. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and we're here, and we're ready to go with the ramble. Uh, but before we do, I'm going to do something a little uh, extra tonight. Um, as you know, my dear wife, or as we refer to her as girlfriend, is in uh, Hong Kong. So she uh, FaceTimed me t tonight, and I decided I would share it with you. It's a little out of sync, as most things are on the Internet. But uh, let's, uh, let's check in and uh, go to Hong Kong and talk to her for a couple of minutes.
Direct from Hong Kong, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> she just washed her hair, so that's the reason it looks like that. Don't worry, you, you, there's nothing you can be able to do with it till it dries out. That's the it's horribleness true. of of, of uh, having curly hair. curly hair. Yeah, but anyway, there the there she is. She's in Hong Kong, but you have no idea she's in Hong Kong. Is there any way you can prove to us that you're in Hong Kong? Um, should I do a little view of the? Of what's behind me? Hold on a minute. Yeah, do it, do it. I have to turn this around. This is looking out of the dining room. Yeah. Okay, that's Hong Kong. That's Hong Kong. It, now you're not down near the down near the shore or down near the bay or no, whatever no. that is. Although you can see, can you see in the distance? Yeah. The, uh -huh. the the water. Yeah. There you go. There she is, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Hong Kong. All the way from Hong Kong. Yeah. It is now 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. Do you want to take people on a tour of the buffet today? When I get ready to go. We'll do it towards the end. Well, yeah. But I don't want this to be too long because it... No, yeah. but... Yeah, I'll do it at the end. Uh, okay. When we say goodbye. When whenever you're ready... Whenever you're ready to say goodbye. So how, how are things in Hong Kong? You enjoying it at all or is it just work? It's work, but it's it's really been great. Boone has been fantastic. Well, don't talk about personal stuff. We're we're uh, going my on boss the air. Is, Yeah, my boss has been great. Everybody's great. I mean, this is the one company that I've had in my life, and I've had a lot of pressure jobs. I worked at the Senate. I worked at the mayor's office. You know, I mean, I've had a lot of pressure. This is the first job that's never been any pressure, and the people work hard. Mm -hmm. They're and they're just, it's just a great company to work with. They're very, very, they very, they take care of their, of their, of the employees and the employees take care of them. I mean, it's yeah. really like that. Yeah. We, you're a little bit out of sync here, but that's only Am because. I? No, it, it, no, it's on the recording because it's oh. the, uh, it's the OBS. I, 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 I'm doing this on my Mac and when I do it on my Mac, I have to, I have to set it, uh, to change uh, uh, yeah. its uh, its settings for synchronization or something like that. So I have to be downstairs at seven thirty a.m. Yeah. my time. Yeah. Um, but we finish at noon, and my friend Ann is taking me out to dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. So I think what I'm going to do this afternoon, I'm going to have a gym here. I'm going to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And then underneath the hotel, which is right next to the hotel we were at last year, is it a Seven story mall underneath the hotel in the ground. Wow. It's the most amazing thing. It's got three or four movies each level. And we're talking like Fifth Avenue type of stores. We're not talking, you know, Kmart. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Wow. Yeah, it is amazing. Oh, I didn't tell you. Siddick, my company, just bought 20 some percent of McDonald's in both Hong Kong and China. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they were there with a big presentation last night. I mean, it was it was great. Wow, that's true. We terrific. all got like yeah, little McDonald's spending things for in Hong Kong, probably for a cheeseburger. <laughs> what can I say? They bought they bought into McDonald's and all you got was this cheeseburger. No, they bought they bought about twenty twenty eight percent into it. Wow. And, yeah, it was it, it was nice. Wow, that's good. That's so cool. we had a banquet last night, which was, you know, 12 course Chinese banquet, which was very good, but it didn't finish till after 10. And that's way past my bedtime. And then my boss invited everybody, all the partners that were there visiting and the staff to drinks mm -hmm. in, in the lounge. So I showed up and left. <laughs> I didn't stay. I didn't get to bed till about midnight, which for me is very late. Yeah. Oh well. So. So. Yeah. Yeah. So today's the last day, and um, I leave tomorrow morning. Wow. Real early. Yeah. So I leave Thursday and I get home Thursday, which is the weirdest thing. Yes. It it is. So. Um, and you're going to show us the buffet? Are you ready to do that? Hold on. So I have to turn this around, right? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, we're going to go into the buffet. I. Okay. okay, here we go into the okay. buffet, folks. <laughs> this is the dining room. Oh, by the way, as yeah. we're walking to the buffet, this is some of the different levels of the hotel. And that's, so, a, that's just an old-fashioned Marriott, isn't it? Yeah, this is just a Marriott. Let me see here. Uh, and now you're okay. Gonna, you, wait till you see this buffet. She showed it to me yesterday, uh, and it's like in in China they really like to eat, and and they're not right. sure what kind of cuisine you want. So here's the lox and bagels. There, there's for, that's for the <laughs> Jewish traveler, <laughs> and it's all you this can. Is, yeah, it's all you can eat, right? Yeah, this is different curries. Yeah. This is your sausage and okay. bacon. So far, and we haven't gotten any Chinese stuff. Yes, we had all those. All this. What? Oh, the curries. Oh, the, the curries. All these curries. Well, that's more. Yeah. In, that's more Indian. Well, they have that too. I think that's for the <laughs> Indian then, traveler. Yeah. Here's, here's the the American stuff. Yeah. Here's now, some sausage. Look at and that, Look at the size of that sausage. Uh, not that and I'm bragging. Uh, <laughs> and. and uh, let Here we got a little here. fresh fruit. Oh, wow. Wow, it's very colorful. And on the other side of this is like a big smoothie table. A big smoothie table? Yeah, where they make smoothies for you. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's Here's terrific. some yogurt. This is all yogurt yeah. to the top. And here's the smoothies. And, and this, I, hate to, I hate to think of what the dinner buffet looks like. Oh, it's amazing. Now, here we go to the sweets. Croissants. See this? Yeah. And now we go to like eggs and breakfast food. Yeah. This is where they make all the eggs for you. Yeah. And they bring it over to the table right here. Yeah. See? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. They make omelets. And then here is noodles. Mm-hmm. And this is all dumplings. Yeah, that's the Chinese stuff. Ooh. Yeah, breakfast dumplings. Dump breakfast dumplings. Yeah. And this is, um, you know, oatmeal, different hot hot cereals. Yeah. And here's some spring rolls and dump more dumplings. Man, it just doesn't stop. <laughs> oh, and then here, this is misu soup. A lot of people eat soup for breakfast. Yeah. So this is all the soup that you can have. Wow. That's and here's all the is all the noodles that go into the soup. The different types, you know, the yeah. all different types of noodles. <sighs> and then here's some greens. <laughs> and that's about it. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll sweetie. Turn, 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 let me turn the camera towards you now. Uh, turn it around so we can see your face as you're walking. Yeah, you can start <laughs> walking. You can start walking. I'm gonna go get my breakfast. Yeah, but uh, alrighty. But, well, uh, it's uh, it's it's actually Wednesday. She's living in the future. There. I'm in the future, talking to the past. Yeah, and um, uh, stick around after I'm through stopping the recording. But uh, say goodbye from Hong Kong. That's bye good. from Hong Kong, and I'll see you all Friday night. Yeah, or Friday night, That's Thursday it. night. No, but I'll be on your, your show Friday oh, night. Oh, Friday night. Oh, yeah, okay. Friday yes. night, right, yeah. Right, right. Take care, everyone. Wait a minute, did your, people talk to, did your people talk to my people? No, but I'm sure they will by the time I get home. Oh, okay. That's, I'll send an email. That's a girlfriend reporting live from the buffet in Hong Kong. <laughs> live, all right. There we go, go live. And uh, we should be... Um, we should be there soon. Let me uh, let me see here. What's happening? Oh boy, that's that's not nice. Okay, there we go. Okay, all right, we're going out. All right, and it looks like we're not spinning around, and you know people can now see us. And uh, let me just go back here, and let me open up the lines now, so that we can talk to people. By the way, you know we have some new. We have some new uh, uh, 
Let me open this up here. Um, we have some new uh, graphics, as you saw. Uh, I did this one. This is the new Ramble graphic, and this is the new um, uh, Gabnet graphic, which I really like this one. That one I like. I am, I'm real happy with that. That's nice and clean and, you know, works well. And uh, anyway, let me see here. Uh, let me go back here. Okay. Here comes Mike, as usual. Uh, it sounds like, sound like she had a wonderful trip. What? It sounds like she had a wonderful trip. Well, no, she's not. Well, she's spending two days there, and then she's coming back. That's a quick trip. And she's working during that time. So how's that? Uh, how's that having a good time? She's eating. She showed us breakfast. That was the most exciting thing she had to show us. You know. So uh, uh, that's an example of whatever. But anyway, uh, to all you people out there, uh, I think you can. Yeah, we're now going out okay. We seem to have no problems with our with our whatever so um hello uh, brian we can hardly see you brian you're all in the dark brian yeah, um, yeah it's, a, it's a long night tonight it's a long night tonight why is that oh yeah why is it a long... i'm still on the clock i'm not oh because you're still, I'm on, the still clock. on the clock and i won't be on yeah, probably until close to, uh, like, 1230 or so. Yeah. Wow. Well, anyway, so uh, uh, how was your weekend, uh, uh, Brian? Did you do anything interesting or exciting? Not really. I just sat around the house. You just sat around the house. Okay. Pretty that's much. all That's all I did this weekend. I just sat around the house, too. It's it, it's it, In a way, I miss girlfriend when she's not here, but the part I don't miss is that after the show's over, I don't have to ban, banish myself to the guest room to watch TV and stuff. I can just go in the bedroom and watch it, you know. So it's a much nicer situation. And you, Phil, how did your little wedding go that you were doing the photography for? Very nice. I stayed at the Mark Hopkins two nights. Uh, it was kind of, it was like a mini vacation uh, with friends and celebration. Uh, uh, I put together the uh, the album. Uh, yeah. I was doing some editing and uh, over the weekend. Yeah, and uh, did your did your girlfriend go with you? Yes, she did. Yeah, so it was kind of like a nice little time for both of you. Exactly, had a nice room and uh, uh, you know really enjoyed it. Uh, the wedding was at the top of the mark. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they had a, a, a section and uh, got some good shots. Uh, I The ceremony was at the um, City Hall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's like 30 weddings a day that go on there. And uh, I found out from somebody else that when they have the LBGT, uh, you know, conference there, uh, that they have 100 weddings on a day. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and it's uh, the the light there is magnificent. I found some really good places to shoot. I'll I'll do more there. I just want to do something. I want want to play a little bit of girlfriend again. I just want to see how this works here. If that that's what was causing the problem. Direct from Hong Kong, uh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, well, she just yep, washed that was your it. hair. So that that's was the it. reason. Okay, it... I know what I know what to, how to fix that problem from here. Yeah, you're in. you're skipping uh, a little bit. Yeah, but I'm I'm stopping. And it's not skipping now. No, we're not skipping. No, uh, well, no, no, you were when you were playing the girlfriend thing and talking at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. Uh, uh, talking about Las Vegas, as you and uh, Bubbles uh, were uh, alluding to, mm -hmm. uh, this week's Dice, uh, your friend Teller uh, was, uh, was on it. Mm -hmm. Had you seen it? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is uh, this, week, this episode of Dice uh, on Showtime. Uh, and and he spoke. Uh, really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, it was a good show. Uh, you know, I, it's my trifecta of uh, of Showtime. It's Ray Donovan, mm -hmm. uh, Dice, and Episodes. Oh, okay. Matt LeBlanc. Matt um, LeBlanc. LeBlanc. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and that was a good one too. And the uh, Ray Donovan, that was that was an excellent one. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that one? No, I don't. I, I'm sick of Ray Donovan. 
Really? I'm, yeah, I'm really sick of it. Well, there's there's a lot of crap out there. At least it's a, it's a well done show. Yeah. Plus, I like John Voight. Uh, well, I I don't even think it's a well done show anymore. I think it's just really boring now. It goes right. nowhere. Oh, the uh, the back and forth with the dead wife. No, I just I just uh, the whole show is just dull. You know. No, I don't, I'm, I'm I don't know. It was, it was some leg breaking. You know, it's it's kind of like Dirty Harry. Uh, without the 357. Yeah. <laughs> 44 Magnum, whatever he shoots. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so uh, so you had a good time with the wedding. That's, yeah. That's very I, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, hey, you got a vacation uh, from, the, from the old Phil. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was very nice. I um, uh, food was good. The uh, the entertainment was good. And you know, you don't go to San Francisco as a tourist that often. You know, I, I live here, so you know who stays at the uh, Mark Hopkins for uh, a couple of nights. I stayed Thursday night, Friday night, checked out on Saturday. Yeah, and uh, you know, so it was like it was like a it was a nice vacation. Yeah, that was good. That's terrific. Um. Uh, yeah, I did nothing. I I just stayed in the house. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do any. I, I was feeling ill again, and uh, I think it has something to do with the weather. I think it has something to do with with either pollen or something because it does. Like yesterday, completely went away. I was fine. I, I thought you guys were getting uh, rain there, or you're going to get rain. There we was had another rain today. storm. We had rain today. Yeah, and uh, look look at this Hurricane Maria. Uh, coming in, it's going to hit uh, what is it, uh, Puerto Rico yeah. uh, uh, again. And uh, I always get that pronunciation because I think of West Side Story, you know, yeah. Puerto Rico. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so uh, the um, the hurricanes coming in, uh, people are devastated, and uh, you know, Trump. Did you see uh, his UN speech? Yeah. You, yeah. What? But yes, I saw part of it. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I that's the reason I like Trump. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, really? I was that, very that happy wonderful with diplomacy he was involving well, himself. You know, in. it's about time somebody took it to them. Bibi Netanyahu no, you're, thought it, it was it, his it, best Phil, speech. In Phil, Phil, you're being stupid. You're no, being stupid. No, no, no you're no, being no. stupid because of your love of Trump. Listen, yeah. I got to tell you, a lot of the stuff he was doing was saber rattling that he can never follow through with, and on other stuff, it is dangerous in our positioning in the world. His whole well, he, take, his whole. Let me finish. His whole take on Iran is fucked. Did you see the uh, the prime minister of Iran today? The prime minister or the, the uh, UN delegate? The prime minister. They interviewed him in Iran. No, I didn't. And see he that. said, if if uh, he said, you've got to remember that the the uh, agreement for us to stop making nuclear weapons wasn't just with the United States. It was with a whole group of countries. And if the United States backs out, they're going to lose any credibility they have in the rest of the world when trying to make deals. Well, the fact that uh, Trump called Iran out, called no, out no, Venezuela. No, no, but you don't called, understand. Called that, that, you know, that's, that, that's kind of like... Look at me. I, 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 went, I went and said something nasty about uh, Korea, or I went and said something nasty about Iran. The idea is you're, you're weakening your position in the world with the, with the attitude he's taking towards Iran. Uh, and, he just and, felt that Clinton and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Obama made a lousy deal. And, wait a minute. Uh, he you says know, it's you, not you, a deal uh, he's willing to uh, keep. Uh, Clinton? Oh, you mean uh, Hillary? Hillary, yeah. Hillary. Okay. Uh, you've got you know, to and he you've says got to... he's embarrassed by the deal. Yeah. And you know what? I think he's right. Uh, also, uh, Iran uh, uh, supports um, uh, terrorism. Hezbollah and and the other. It's called groups, Hezbollah. Hamas. It's called Hezbollah. Yeah. Okay. So I, so I don't, freedom fighters. Yeah. So I don't pronounce their their name properly, but I hope that somebody hits them over the head. And, uh, well, if you can't pronounce their name correctly, obviously you don't know very much about them. Well, it doesn't take much of an effort to pronounce freedom fighters because it's, uh, that's exactly what we employ, our version of terrorists, but uh, they no. operate with our, with our uh, business interests at heart. So. Yeah, 
uh, you know, and uh, tell tell that to the people of Iran who are being kept uh, basically hostages. And the same thing with North Korea. And you look at Venezuela; they they can't even get food or medicine right now because of their socialistic uh, regime. Uh, their their country is falling apart. And what he and what Trump said was that socialism and communism has only led to this kind of uh, issue in every country that it's ever uh, touched. Yes, but. Trump's a dunce, okay? You're, you're, oh, that, quote, you're quoting a, good... a guy with great authority who has not a great, any great ideas and doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. I thought he outlined his ideas beautifully tonight, uh, today. Well, that's, so because, logic, that's because you're a so moron like he is. Germany collapsing. With one moron understands another I'm moron, sorry. okay? Is Germany a socialist communist country? No. No, it's, no. Well, it's then, not a communist country, but it, is, it, is, it does employ a system. It does employ a governing system of democratic socialism. I mean, they have uh, universal yeah. health care. Yeah, they also have uh, socialism. Is that when you get on your knees and you and you and you yank it off? No, there's no such thing as democratic a, socialism. Yes, there absolutely is, and there's such a thing as democratic communism, which we upended down in yeah. South America when we had Allende assassinated because he was going to prove you could have a communistic, democratic society. No, that's just a warm and fuzzy way no, no, of, no, of no, uh, no. trying you're to mask Phil, what they Phil, really Phil, are. Phil, you don't know what you're saying. You really don't. Do you know who Allende was? Uh, yeah, he was the leader of, um, it wasn't Panama, it was the other one. Um, uh, he, he was overthrown. Uh, he overthrew... Uh, I'm trying to think of what Central American and who, who, who was he replaced by? Uh, the guy from Panama, the strong man. No, uh, no, you, you don't man. know shit, Phil. <laughs> you don't know The guy shit. just died. No, no. That's kind of it's a, you've, no. Got that, you've got Panama mixed up with uh, Chile. Oh, well, they all look alike down there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say that. Yeah, with Chile. And uh, you can't even tell me who. We had Allende, the uh, CIA killed Allende. Yeah, and uh, they replaced him with who? With who? Uh, uh, um, uh, the the other one that got thrown over, and his wife. Uh, no, 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 that's no, 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 that's uh, Caron. Uh, that's years uh, earlier. You don't know the shit about what you're talking about, Phil. So oh. shut up about this. You don't oh, know what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Just like Iran had a. Uh, oh, Pinochet. Like who who, 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 who came up with? Overthrown by America. Who who came up with Pinochet? What's his name? You can't even get his name right. Yeah, Bri Brian. Brian. Yeah. yeah. So we, uh, we replaced he, him with Pinochet, who was one of the biggest killers, one of the biggest human rights violators of all time. And and the last guy in Venezuela that just died, he wasn't. And this no, government. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Phil, stop it. Stop it. You take us off the topic by going somewhere else. We're not talking about Venezuela. We're talking about Chile. We're talking about Allende being over, being oh. assassinated, wait a minute, by the CIA and us replacing with Pinochet, who became one of the worst dictators in South America. Well, this is the guy you were thinking of, by the way, Phil, was Manuel Noriega. Yeah, Noriega, a strong man, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he, he, Noriega he was small peanuts. the CIA, too, uh, you know, because he wound up in Miami. But uh, all I know is we were talking about Venezuela, Iran, and North Korea, and Syria, four countries that were called out today by Trump, four countries that support terrorism and that are a threat to the world. And in a world where we want less nuclear uh, proliferation... Nuclear? Uh, you know, th uh, what he's doing, I think, is the Unless best thing that, this, that, that anyone else, uh, that any other president or any other speaker. Uh, the only thing I felt that he could have done is he could have done a Khrushchev. He could have taken his shoe off and he could have banged it on the podium. And then I would have been. Uh, 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 one more thing, Bill. If not, you got found your fist, too, at the same time. Oh, okay. Well, I was pretty young when Khrushchev spoke uh, at the the UN. But uh, yeah, if he would have taken his shoe off and banged it on the podium, I I would have been in heaven. Yeah. You really? Uh, Isn't the UN supposed to be peace? And he's talking like he's going to blow up a whole country. Well, he's peace through strength. He's saying that uh, you know he wants a sovereign country first. He he says he's here. He's going to protect America first. 
and uh, and that he wants other countries around the world to uh, be able, regardless of their government, uh, to be able to be sovereign countries that are strong and not maybe militaristically. You know but he's speaking out of his ass because right now he, ha- you know, one of these days, ISIS or somebody is going to cause an act of uh, of absolute terror in this country that you won't believe, and it's all going to be on his watch because he wasn't paying attention. Well, I think he is paying no, attention. No, he's not paying attention. He can't, pay, he's, he can't pay attention to a briefing, for Christ's sake. He's aware of the threat, and he's the first one, instead of you know. sitting there and pontificating about how great the other leaders are, he, he, he took them to task. Oh, big deal. Big deal. That's great diplomacy. That's great yeah, diplomacy. It yeah, it's wonderful diplomacy. Diplomacy Boy, through do strength. I feel safer now. It's kind of the way Putin does it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He likes Putin. Yeah. Well, Why'd I'm, you live over there, Phil? Hey, there? I'm happy here. It's it's all you all you well, guys that want socialism. It's so over there. Russia to sit there, stop your feet, and do everything else. Why just move to fucking Russia then? Yeah. Okay. That, that's that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you know. I'm, so so does that mean that you didn't like his speech then? <laughs> Well, I just thought it was stupid. I thought it was ill-informed. I thought it was it was jingoistic. You know, so shut his fucking mouth and let uh, what's his name uh, Rex Tillerson do the talking. Not or Nikki Haley. Yeah. I was glad, and uh, you noticed that the uh, guy from North Korea, the UN delegate from North Korea, uh, was his chair was empty. Uh, yeah, uh, well, good. Yeah, it's probably because he couldn't keep a straight face. He's yeah. probably laughing so hard it has. Moronic, this asshole is. Did you see the uh, the shot of Kelly when he started saying that stuff? They got Kelly with his ha- head in his hands again. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> uh, I just I posted like it this. on Facebook. Facebook I think, comments, I just posted it. Yeah. There's I a think, link. I thought uh, a lot of people uh, uh, liked. He also got applause, you know. Uh, he got applause for uh, <laughs> the woman, the, 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 mother, the female comments by about ten people. Well, uh, yeah, I would have given him applause. Did you watch the whole speech, Phil? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. It was at 7 this morning, uh, my time. Hmm. Yeah, I saw it, too. It, was, it started off like it was actually going to be halfway decent, and then it went to the toilet real fast. <laughs> yes, the, the problem with Trump is nobody can trust. He's in the Paris Accords. He's going to get out. He's going to get back in. He, 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 he gets out of agreements that we've had for years. He says he's going to get out, doesn't want to get the guy can't make any kind of decision. Hey, it's unreliable. But, Tim, if you threaten to get out, it gives you a negotiating time. Well, uh, it means you're not going to be able to negotiate with anybody in the future. Because it means not, it also jeopardizes our negotiating with North Korea, if that's even possible. Uh, and you don't no, just throw out. More, there's no negotiating you know, well, put, with North Korea. Put it even more but, but Yeah, you have clearly. to negotiate with China, though. You know, succinctly, I, you cry wolf, nobody's keeps crying wolf. Eventually, nobody's going to believe you. The, I don't uh, think he's crying wolf. wolf is right across the, uh, right across the, uh, Brian, I don't room. think he's, I don't think he's crying wolf. I think he's, uh, very serious in what he's saying. And, uh, no, he's you know, not, he's not followed through. He can't even fire people. Oh, uh, he's good at that. He does. No, like he's not. Fire. People leave because they know they have to get out of there, but the only person he's, he's fired uh, is Comey. And what about Scaramucci? Uh, well, Scaramucci uh, was on his way out. Flynn. His wife wanted him back. So what about you know, Flynn? Uh, uh, hey, Flynn. Flynn's in deep, deep crap. Well, along with uh, he got fired. Man- Manafort. Mr. Manafort. Yeah. He fired him too. You know, he, but he also to, hired him. He's, <laughs> he's, why would he go hire somebody that's an expert in, in Ukrainian Russian politics? It doesn't uh, make it. The guy's been uh, under FBI invest- investigation for 11 years. He's a money launderer. Well, yeah. yeah he's a Hello. con man. Why yeah. would you Wait a minute. Wait, somebody just joined us. Who, who just joined us? Is this Alex Bennett? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hello? Is this the world-famous Alex Bennett, distinguished yes. journalist? Who is this? Can you get to the point? Uh, it's Al Goldstein calling from where I am now. 
And you know how hot it is down here, don't you? Okay. See you later. You know? Yeah. I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> you oh, know? It's Thursday night's guest, isn't it? What do you mean Thursday night's Who guest? Who the fuck was that cock spot? Oh, yeah, it was uh, an unknown number. I, maybe he was right. Uh, is that your um, uh, uh, Penn Gillette? Mm, no. No, it doesn't sound like him? No. Alex, are you running teasers for us now? No. Anyway. So, you know, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Anyway, yeah, here's who we're going to have on tomorrow night, so in case people want to know. So I just thought I'd throw that in there because I'm trying to make sure it works okay. All right. Anyway, uh, you know, is this whole whole process here every night is like, you know, patting your head and rubbing your stomach. I'm having to keep the technology going and figure out what's, what the problems are and at the same time uh, uh, do a show. Uh, anyway, Tim, need, what what were you going to say, Tim? Uh, you need five or six interns. What do Work you, for uh, free. They can learn. The, the, they're going to pass on. You know, because Axios is having a big convention. Well, I don't believe. About the, I don't believe uh, interns are a terrible, terrible thing to do. If you, if you're going to have people working with you, you should pay them. Okay, and if you can't afford to pay them, then you don't have them. You know, I know, but you're paying them in free training. No, so that's, I, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. You know, you know I, I, it is a way in which uh, operations for a long time have, have gotten away with uh, free labor. It doesn't really uh, transmit itself into being any kind of job or uh, the ability to get a job somewhere. I find internships horrible unless they're paid internships. Yeah, they should be paid. You are correct. What about if it leads to a job, though? Like, they guarantee them a job. Like no, that but they, you can't guarantee anybody a job. Oh, they can't? Yeah. Um, what? So you're going to be... But so you, 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 if you have an agreement, a sign-on agreement with a community college or university, they have grant money. They can pay the interns a certain amount. And give them credit. Well, for class I've never, I've had, I, we've had interns, and I've, we've, ne I've never known of them getting paid for it. Okay. How do they get an intern at ten o'clock at night? Also, you know, four nights a week. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, to, to come to Harlem, you know, that that's that's not going to be an easy. Well, but they don't have to be there. They can do it remotely too. Uh, not, no. This this is 2017, Phil. Yeah, but you, you don't have to be there to work for them. Yeah, uh, but anyway, that's just just yeah. That's off off topics. So. You almost have to anyway, look at uh, to communicate what to do. Yeah, well, and don't don't start writing me letters saying I'll be an intern for you. No, I don't want I don't want <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't want any interns. Okay, all right. Okay, how about Mexico? Anyway. Huh? How about Mexico? One hundred and five dead. Really? Yeah. It's, uh, it's had another earthquake today. Yeah, yeah, 105 today. How many people were dead from Hurricane Harvey? Uh, 57 or something. Yeah. That's it. Last yeah, the Red Cross is getting their ass reamed for not bringing any money to them, too. But yeah, what are they? What is their excuse for that? I heard they a don't team, have one. They I, just said that their uh, website crashed from so many people trying to apply. Uh, and there was somebody else that said that food and blankets were being thrown away. Uh, that were given for Hurricane Harvey, and instead of taking them and, and using them in Florida, uh, they're um, uh, they they're throwing them, they're, they're disposing of them. Well, I would have to hear the reasoning behind that. It might be that the expense of moving them somewhere else is not is is more expensive than just buying new blankets and giving them to the people in Florida. That's a possibility. Yeah. You know, but it was uh, just somebody's post that I uh, that I saw. They had pictures of the oh, food. Yeah. And they, uh, yeah. They were... yeah, those posts are reliable as, as hell. Yeah. Uh, there, there's another. It's the internet. The, Everything on the, the internet is true. It is. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> they are having a problem with with the water supply because once they turn the water supply on, the sewer systems are messed up pretty. They're big time. That's going to be a big expense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To fix the sewer system, so they can only run water. In some cities, for certain hours a day, so it's a mess in some of the areas. Well, I made reservations today. I'm going to support the people in Key Largo by going there and uh, 
spending uh, spending money and uh, uh, giving them tourism. Oh, in other words, you're going scuba diving again. Yeah, he's going scuba diving. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't sound <laughs> like you're doing a wonderful just... thing, okay? Hurricane so you're diving. Your roundabout way of saying he ain't gonna do shit. He ain't gonna do shit. He's just gonna oh, go no, down no, there. No, no, no. Actually, uh, uh, I, I have a sun, that's it. I have a Facebook friend that lives in uh, in Key Largo. He's the uh, head of. Um, uh, he publishes the Alert Diver magazine. Uh, Stephen Frank. He's an underwater photographer. And uh, so I. Well, you're uh, alert wrote, until you get the bends. But go ahead, anyway. Yeah. Well, I wrote that I uh, I was going to come in November. And, and and dive there, you know, because, hey, I could have went to Mexico, uh, you know, which wasn't affected by the storm. I could have gone I, to Mexico. Gone, yeah. When, yeah, Key Largo came uh, out. Yeah, so Key Largo got hit pretty hard. So um, yeah, Stephen Frink uh, uh, liked my post. <laughs> well, the, I, the Keys reminded me of something. I mean, when I, when I lived there and I looked at the map of Florida, mm -hmm. to begin with, as you know, Florida, of all the states we have, looks the most like a penis. It does. It does. It looks right. just like a penis, and there's a big vein going down. It's called I-80 or something Some like that. What is that? I-95. I-95, yeah. It's a big vein. It's a really huge vein. And then when you get down to the keys, it looks like uh, the penis has the clap. Well, and and it and, and, and out some cum. Yeah, yeah, well, it looks like the, it look. I think if knowing Florida, that's venereal disease. <laughs> it's Florida, Florida looks like a. Big and the only problem, the only problem with the last hurricane is Miami didn't get hit that hard. You hate Miami. I hate <laughs> Miami. Marathon, <laughs> Key West, a lot of the lower keys got really. It is, it is uh, and uh, Key Largo, uh, when I contacted the dive place today, said that uh, the roads aren't open, but they. But you can go boats... scuba diving because everything's underwater. Yeah, really. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm diving a wreck uh, out there. Yeah, the, uh, the wreck uh, happens to be somebody's trailer court, but you know, yeah. that's... <laughs> can go anywhere. He's going to go. Right on the By the way, you know what I don't get? Uh, let me let me bring up something here. I don't get people who live in, like, hurricane areas, or not hurricane, tornado areas, who then live in mobile homes. Well, you know, you know because, they're the sacrificial Because they become, ones. they become, as some people once referred to them, God's bowling alley. <laughs> you yeah. need that. It's a magnet. When the, when, the hur when the tornado comes, it hits the mobile home park, and all the other brick-and-mortar homes are spared. But don't, uh, well, don't these people realize? That if you're living in a house where the only thing anchoring you to the ground is a garden hose, you know you're in bad shape when a tornado hits. You know these these things have uh, have axles and and they take the wheels off of them. I don't understand why they don't leave the wheels on them so that they can tow them down the road in the non-earthquake area or non-tornado uh, area. I would have a trailer like that. You think they would leave? Well, you know, you can be in the wheel rental business then. You know, tornadoes are coming. Wheels are a big item, you know. Yeah. The axles are there. All they got to do is stick the wheels on. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh. So, uh, uh, um, where are we in, in this whole uh, thing? Well, uh, yeah, I no guess Mexico City. Fine. Mexico City. Is it 35 years almost to the day or to the day that Mexico City had that last major earthquake? 30, 30 yeah, 32. Is it 32? 32. Okay. And, uh, and, and their building codes, even though the government They haven't said, gotten any better. No, they haven't. You know, when you lived in the marina, uh, there was a lot of there were a lot of homes that had garages underneath them, and then the apartments were on the first floor and above. Yeah, and those garages didn't really lend themselves to the support that they needed during the earthquake. Yeah, I'm trying to use a credit card to uh, get through this. How do I? How do I use it? I... Oh, wait a minute. Let's watch Brian trying to get through a toll gate with a credit card. Just run it, Brian. It just, run it. Yeah, yeah, just gun it. Gun it. <laughs> yeah. No. Tell him you catch him later. <laughs> Tell him you have be, become a felon. Hey, hey. 
How come they don't have fast track there? I, I, like I don't know California. why they don't realize he's a terrorist who just cut a heart out of somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it might have been the toll taker. <laughs> Probably the border. They're going to search him now. Wait a minute, let, let, let's watch this happening here. This He's is, not an American. No, 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 no. Oh, Shut up, Phil. Stop him at the border. Check his turban. Come on, yeah. there we go. There we go. He's. Look what's happening here. Let's. Uh, he's done, he's flip, flipping him double or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Brian? They won't take credit cards? Oh, uh, it, it didn't go through. Imagine didn't take that brand of credit card. This is when the show gets really good. You know? Yeah. That and when my wife <laughs> goes through a buffet. You know. yeah. Yeah, just run it, Brian. Just run it. <laughs> Don't they have fast track there? Tell them you'll catch them next time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I finally figured out what went wrong earlier. I've got to, whenever I tape somebody ahead of time or do an interview ahead of time, I have to redo it to bring the rate down the, so that it doesn't use up as much bandwidth. That's what the problem was. Uh, and hers was, uh, was rather large. <laughs> So I'm, I just, well, that's ridiculous because I know I have a balance in there. Uh, I, I, no, it's a different one. That's what she said. Put it, yeah, put it in. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, good. Okay. Give hey, him a way. tip. Yeah. 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 Let's see. Here. Let's uh, let's get all everybody back in the uh, in yeah. order Give there. A tip, Brian. <laughs> Brian doesn't have his papers in order. Typical. Yeah. Can I see your papers, they please? The border. <laughs> Where's right. your drink card? For some reason they wouldn't read my card right, so I used another one. Yeah. Well, that's company uh, card. Company card. Tom had screwed up. Hey, we already started a legal defense fund for you. <laughs> Yeah. In 2017. Why can't you just take a picture of my license plate and get it the fuck over with? What are those? Uh, what are those red lights in your back window there? Uh, Migra. Red So back to the Mexicans. Uh, oh, I'm against them. <laughs> the way he said that was very. In the, in the marina, uh, uh, they changed thanks. all of the uh, building codes. So that they reinforced those buildings that uh, collapsed during the 89 quake. But, uh, as you mentioned, in Mexico City, even though the government told them that they had to reinforce those buildings, the people didn't. And that's one of the reasons why the, uh, the death toll uh, is as high as it is. Really? Yeah. Well, you know. Uh... You, know, you know, Phil, we're coming up on our, they say that the big one's going to hit about every 30 years and we're at what, 18, 19 years now? Hmm. Yeah. We're going to uh, get ready to rock and roll here in a little bit. Yeah, well, I, I don't think we're going to have anywhere near the problem that uh, other cities uh, have uh, with those size quakes. What was... Gonna, what, well, you, what don't, was, you don't know the next one is going to hit been. L.A. It's going to hit L.A. Well, they did. Well, Alex, was talk, Alex was talking about the tornadoes. People live in mobile homes, the Midwest and whatnot. Here's what I don't understand. If I lived out there, first of all, I'd wait until I have a little more money. But I'd rather build my house under the ground, or at least 90% of it under the ground. That way, when the F5 tornado strikes, uh, everybody else will be panicking, and I'll just tell everyone to go fuck themselves because I'll just go to my basement. <laughs> you know, yeah. in Kansas, a lot of people have bought uh, those um, those. I, mean, uh, I know you'll be yelling out the window, clothes. "Hey, assholes! I have food." Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't mind owning one of those missile silos, except I wouldn't Where's want to. Wait, wait a minute! Wait a minute! I I've been I I've been in God now, cocksuckers. <laughs> when I when I was out in Topeka with uh, the people out at New Tech, the head of New Tech had a helicopter. He rented yeah. a helicopter. He used to like go flying a helicopter. So he said, "Come on, get in the helicopter. Let's go. Let me show you something." And he takes me out, and we land uh, in front of this fence. And he says, see that? That's a missile silo. Now watch this. And then he takes the helicopter, goes, jumps the fence with the helicopter. We land. 
He goes down into the silo. It doesn't have a missile any longer, but it does have a person who lives there. Wow. Yeah. And and he had a home there and a business. He built, I can't remember what he built. He built something, boats or something like that. And was that out this way? It was out in, 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 in Kansas, Kansas. outside of Topeka, Kansas. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, man, there is nothing really more fun to be in than a missile silo. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? I, I would think it would be. Yeah, you it's know, incredible. It's a pretty cool environment. And, it's, and the guy lived down there. He had his home, he had, he had kitchen and the whole thing. And, you know, uh, the missile was long gone. You don't need curtains in a place like that no, either. No, you don't. No curtains, and, no shutters. And, and as you say, when the tornadoes hit, forget it. You're you're golden. Yeah. The only problem was he got all his furnishings at Target. <laughs> <laughs> That's subtle, I, I know, but yeah. Hey, fellas, did you see that article in the San Francisco Chronicle? The people with uh, well, the street was ninety thousand. With that guy, a uh, couple bought that street in San Francisco. Is now being sued by the yeah. people. They bought a street. That story is yeah. about, that story is about five in, months old. Pacific. They were suing them back then. Yeah. What street did they buy? That's an it's old story, Pacific, Mike. Pacific Heights. Yeah. Pacific Heights somewhere. Oh, what it was like an alley or something? No, no. no, 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 no you, you, you know, you know, know the street out in, not in Pacific Heights. It's out near. It it, it uh, it's like if you're going to the beach. Okay, yeah. and there, there's that whole area. I'm trying to remember the name of the area, uh, the but, the, news? but there's this yeah. circle set. Not super. No, what the hell no, is it? no, 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 uh, no. It's by the bay. It's right by the bay. Oh, Gary, oh, all the way to Gary. Just... But it, but it's a circle. It's kind of a circle, and it looks out over the water. These beautiful oh. homes are very expensive homes. It's not Seacliff, is it? Sea uh, not Sea Cliff. Uh, Sea Cliff. Oh, oh, in Presidio Heights. Uh, no, it's where I, no, Feinstein no, used to I, live. Presidio I, I, Terrace. Yes, yes, that's it. That's uh, that's yeah. That's a nice street. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the one that's uh, that's having the problems. Well, I think they just want to keep the riffraff out. Uh, it's is it gated? Somebody bought the rights to it for like fifty dollars. No. That's it. Yeah, I mean uh, ninety thousand. I think it was. Those houses 000. sell for twenty million. Yeah. Yeah. And then he wants to charge the people who live there <laughs> to drive the street. Presidio Terrace, ninety thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. But they're uh, sir, saying no. The county of San Francisco was saying they put the mail, uh, the word out like they're supposed to, all the legal mumble jumble stuff. When they sent the stuff out, this one notice ended up in Kern Street, a real fancy uh, building there. Kearney? Kearney. Well, come to find out, it was one of the business managers that used to work for that. That there were uh, Feinstein. So uh, you're see. making no sense at all, Mike. It is. I'm making sense. <laughs> no, you're Phil. not. Anybody? Is it, it... I didn't say it. Good, Phil. You're lucky. Right. <laughs> oh. Okay, just tell me what he just said, Phil. Uh, he tried to say that the guy who uh, got the rights to the circle uh, was the business manager for uh, some some group of people, and uh, he was off Kearney Street. <laughs> Right, uh, six four. Uh, well, Kearney Street's a long street, and it, you got North Beach Kearney Street. You yeah. got downtown I Kearney. Street. I don't know what street it was. It was some. What does that so have to do there. with the fact that he bought the thing? Yeah, what they street he lived on? There's no that, no one knew about it. Well, Presidio Terrace is off of Arguello, and uh, they got that nice temple there. Uh, uh, I forgot what the name of uh, the, the one on Arguello with the big dome. Look, our uh, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, uh, I I remember there was. Um, uh, I by think the way, it was the by the way, you know Lincoln was Jewish. Did you know that? How could Lincoln be Jewish if uh, Ford owned it? Uh, no, because he uh, he uh, uh, got shot in the temple. Ah, yeah, all right. So. Oh. <laughs> That was a that was a holy situation. That's one of the oldest jokes of all time. I think I learned that when I was a child. All right, bada boom, bada boom. That's a big bada boom, bada boom. Yeah. Anyway. No rim job. I mean rim shot. No, I'm not allowed. <laughs> oh, by the way, tomorrow. No, what about what about a sound effect? A sound effect for a rim job. I got no, it, no, but I'm no, not allowed no, to use he's it. He's not allowed to use it. 
Uh, by the way, tomorrow on this program, uh, Penn Gillette. Um, we did the interview. Uh, we did the interview. What? But uh, yesterday, and uh, the only thing I was worried about, I'm going to have to I have to make sure I make the file small enough so it doesn't slow down the internet, whatever. But Penn, uh, Penn Gillette know, tomorrow, and it's very it's very good. We talk about his career. Now, did he actually own Gillette? You know, the, the no. shaving place. No, no. That's <laughs> a G, not a J. Uh, but uh, I can't pronounce it anyway. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so Penn Gillette tomorrow at the beginning of the, at the top of the show on video, not live. Yeah. So, hello, right. Jack Bishop. Hey there. All this discussion about San Francisco <clears throat> and uh, the fact that Phil Meyer shot uh, some a wedding photo mm -hmm. reminded me of something that I have been trying to remember for the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. What radio station was at one Knob Hill Circle? One Knob Hill Circle. Knob Hill, bum, bum, bum. Is that KSFO? No. No, KSFO no. was in the Fairmont Hotel. Was that the classic uh, station? I don't know. I know. What the hell I, was that? I don't remember. I don't think. I, one Knob Hill Circle. Knob Hill, I don't think there was a radio station up there. Is there a Knob Hill Circle? Uh, now, there's a Knob Hill. But I don't know of a Knob Hill Circle. Hmm. Well, where? Well, 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 who was in the? Who was at the top of the mark? But, well, no, there wasn't anything at the top of the mark. There no. wasn't a station. It, there wasn't a, a restaurant station. No. bar. KSFO. KSFO was in uh, the uh, in in the Fairmont Hotel, uh, just a little bit adjacent to the Tonga Room. So that's uh, across the street from the top, from the mark. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact. From my room, I could see the Tonga Room entrance. Yes, my father used to work in the Tonga Room. Oh, that my, room. my father, is, my is father, my father is famous because the Tonga Room was famous for the fact that it had a, uh, it, it had a swimming pool in the middle of it. It, it had an island. Well, in wait it a minute. Too. No, no, it didn't have an island. It had a raft. Oh, okay. And, and the, that's band, where the band, the band was on the raft, and what they right. would do is they would float the raft out in the middle of the pool while they were playing music, and my father was on the very end playing his violin, and he had to grab the rope and pull it back in. And one night he was so drunk, he pulled it back in and fell into the pool. <laughs> hey, if they, if they don't like the band, they just disconnect the rope. That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, Alex, what years did your dad work at the Fairmont? I was, the reason I ask, I would say the late, I would say the '40s and early '50s. But basically, in the, in the early '50s, he was at the uh, he was at the St. Francis Hotel, in the uh, mural room, uh, Union Square, uh, Union off of Union yeah. Square, uh, where Faraday, Fatty Arbuckle had his big party, and where uh, who who died there? Which president? Uh, Oh no, well, that wasn't that hotel that he died. You're okay. thinking of uh, the guy that was president for a month. It and was at went the to Alaska. Uh, he got sick, Palace. and he came back. Really, oh, it was the Sheraton. You're right. It was the Sheraton Palace. Yeah, William Henry Harrison, right? Yeah, uh, no. Um, Cleveland. Cleveland? No. Uh, no. No. He lived uh, long enough to get a city named after him. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, this guy was. Jeez, um, oh, I, I, I always knew his name. Man. Harrison. No. No. No, later. Uh, yeah, he, he, he went to Alaska, he got food poisoning, and he died at the Sheraton Palace. Well, see here. President food poisoning. <laughs> well, that could have been Bush. Didn't he get food poisoning in Japan and President threw up? food poisoning uh, coming no, right up at that. even flew. finishing. William yeah, he, I was right. I was correct. Kiss my what? ass. William Henry Harrison. That's what really? I thought. Yeah. No. Yes, no. It, it says he, so. He was what, the short, say he died at the Sheraton Palace. Shortest term, for yeah. holding <clears throat> office of the presidency for 31 days before dying. Harrison was the first president to die while in office when he caught pneumonia and died on April 4th, 1841. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Where are we? Uh, 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 I don't have a full story on it. Wait a minute, hold on. A list of presidents who died in office. It's not going to have a whole story there, though. Uh, William, uh, let's see. It might on Wikipedia. Uh, Zachary Taylor, William Henry Harrison. Uh, 
Uh, but it doesn't say here. Huh. Well, he couldn't have died at, at at the hotel that we were just talking about. Well, they said he got food poisoning. 18, 1841. Wait a, minute, I, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Warren G. Harding. That's it, that's it. Died from a sudden heart yeah. attack in his hotel suite while visiting San Francisco around 7.35 p.m. August 2nd, 1923. Yava Vava, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Led to theories that he was poisoned. Uh, yeah, food poisoning. Yeah, but it doesn't say what hotel. But it pro- I, uh, I think Sheraton it, Palace. I think it was the Sheraton Palace, yeah. That's just below market. Yeah, and, uh, and but when we say that, folks, we don't mean that the price is lower than the prevailing price of other properties. <laughs> Market Street. Yes, Market Street. Well, the reason I asked when your dad worked uh, at the uh, at the Fairmont and then at the St. Francis, I wanted to put it in perspective because I think if he worked there in the late forties, early fifties, uh, my mom was working there at the same time at the at the St. Francis. Was that only my the father she, she, she was, was working, too. He was working. I know he was working at the St. Francis about 1951, 1952, 1953. Well, my mom was working there in 51 and 52. Yeah. Where Where did she work, though, in the hotel? Well, it was her third job in San Francisco. I mean, you're black, uh, so she must have been a cleaning woman. Yeah, she was a maid. Oh, uh, really? I'm she had, sorry. I was a, it was a joke. Well, it was, she was nothing wrong with that. She yeah. she had worked uh, uh, as a as a brake person or a brake woman on the uh, cable cars. Wow! During the war, yeah, and you know, impressive. and you then see them grab those things. Yeah, she was. You know, she you know she could she could do that. And no, I'm sorry, she wasn't a brake person. She was a conductress. That's right. She was a. Did condu- they let her ring the bell? I that I don't know, but. Uh, you know, women who had those kinds of jobs. You know, there are only two people listening to this whole show who, who, who are from San, who are from San yeah. Francisco, care about any of this. But you know, well, anyway, Phil, when the war ended, she lost her job because the men who had been working for the Municipal Railway of San Francisco came back to work. That's so right. she lost her job to the yeah. man. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, uh, that, that was common dur- at that time where women who had replaced all these men during World War II, when the men came back, they were they were let go. You didn't get the joke. Oh, she wait, lost but- the job to the man. <laughs> you know, like uh, undercover undercover brother is always trying to, you know, uh, free, uh, uh, get, uh, uh, get uh, your, your, your no. attempt at black humor is not <laughs> very good, Phil. Uh, I'm trying to sound like so yeah, The words are yeah, even blood over because the, because you're sports. you're about the whitest human being I know. <laughs> He's quite <laughs> Phil, in the words of the great Jackie Gleason, hardy har har. All right. <laughs> all right, yeah. He doesn't even do the all right right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's it's the, the blackness in me. Oh, Christ. I got so much soul, I can't oh, control. shit. You can just run by your deep sneakers tomorrow. Wait, and wait, that wait. Just... Cancel my black American card. <laughs> If, if we're letting you in, they're going to take your black card away from you. <laughs> All right. Well, let me see. So anyway, it was what well, you're thinking, Warren G. Harding. Yeah. Yes, that was it. Yeah. I knew it wasn't Harrison. Warren G. Harding. That's it. Right. Okay. Uh, so you, so you got it. You you got something. We got something right tonight. Yeah, but I couldn't remember his name. All except the one. You want to let me go? Uh, the hotel he died in. <clears throat> They've got a wonderful brunch <laughs> on Sundays there. Well, he damn sure didn't get his politics right, but that's another story. In 31 days, he, he got almost as much accomplished as Trump. Oh, Christ. <laughs> you know, Phil, I've always wanted to ask one of you conservatives this question. <laughs> Who should be your opponent? Who should be my opponent? Who should be the opponent of you conservatives? Uh, there shouldn't be any opponents. It should just be uh, conservatives, and that's the only way that there is. You know? So, in other words, a Paul yeah. Bureau with an American flag wrapped around it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, let me put on my hat for that one. <laughs> I would hold up my Make America Smart bumper sticker 
but we've given them all away and we haven't got the new ones yet. But be listening to The Intersection because starting next week we'll have them and we'll be giving away, once again, Make America Smart bumper stickers. You know, I, I used to listen to a radio station in New York called WWRL, uh, 1600, top of the dial. No, and uh, now there was a guy on there, his name was the Reverend Brother uh, A.G. A- a- Lofton. And uh, he he used to say, we have, if you send one dollar to the Reverend Brother James L. Lofton, uh, we'll send you a free golden cross. But we cannot get this golden cross from France because of the dock strike that is now going on in this great country. It sounds kind of like your bumper sticker thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we, we ran out of the ones that I initially got. Uh, one of the other great stories of tele-evangelism or radio evangelism was a guy in Chicago who uh, was always talking about the trip that he was taking and that he would be leaving from such and such a station at 11, and he was going to be taking train number six. Yeah. It would arrive in the next city that he was going to at 8. That's right. The number is 1168. He was giving out the, the numbers for the... <laughs> <laughs> Did it for years that way. Well, uh, Lofton, uh, I still remember. I must have been 10 years old. And it was uh, James L. Lofton, Post Office Box 208, Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> Send you $1 who's for the who, free who, golden uh, who cross. Who was the preacher, uh, Jack? Um, I'm trying to remember his name right now. Who used to just go on for days. I mean, he had like all the time you could buy on one TV station. And he would just oh, sit there. Uh, oh, uh, Gene Scott. Gene Scott. Yeah. What a special person he was. <laughs> yes. He'd keep you up all night. No, but yeah. when he was, di- he, were you around when he was divorcing his wife? And he would uh, go on oh, and do just, these sermons about his wife. <laughs> really? I'd like to hear that. Mm-hmm. And he just told it, told it like it was, didn't he? Yeah, Gene Scott. Until, yeah, but you had yeah. to send in money to, to get him more airtime uh, because he was going to lose his satellite upfeed. Yeah, yeah. And he was always and, always trying to get money. And if you weren't giving uh, your love offerings, he'd stop the program and just start showing videotape of his horse ranch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That wasn't the guy that sold the unfinished furniture in San Francisco uh, who had the horse? Oh, uh, right? yeah. What the hell was his name? Uh yeah, uh, he. You know, Bar- you know what's great? It Barboa, was great. Was, no, it was no. great when it, television when television else. first started. Uh, TV stations would sell time to anybody who was willing to buy it, and so you had all these pitch guys coming on and doing stuff, uh, and um, uh, they, they would. Uh, I would just watch them all the time. You know, do their little pitches. You know. And, uh, the, their car dealerships and things like that. Best story I ever heard. Chuck McCann. So you know who Chuck yeah. McCann is? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I used to watch him when I was a kid. Chuck was working at uh, Channel 11 here in uh, New York City, WPIX. Mm-hmm. And he was doing a movie show every uh, every Saturday night, I think. Uh, uh, and he would, it was something something movie, and he was the host of the show. And they had this guy who sponsored it who may had a rotisserie that he was selling. And what he would do at the beginning of the show, he would skewer a, a, a lamb or a roast beef or whatever, put it on the grill. And then as you would keep coming back, he'd be basting it. And they'd break in the movie and say, ah, look, it's, it's getting better and better. And it's getting nicer and nicer. You too can have a very lovely roast beef if you just order one of my rotisseries. And then they would it would whirl around and... By the end of the show, he would produce this fully made roast beef and say, let's cut this. It's really tender. Oh, it's lovely to the taste. We'll see you later. Back to the movie. Um, you did a movie thing in San Francisco. You were Captain yeah. UHF. Yeah, but don't, 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 let's not, uh, let's not no, ruin the story by, by bringing that up. I um, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Did you see the look of uh, embarrassment on Bennett's face? No, I'm no, there's no embarrassment. We used to, he had a list. I had a hat was, with a propeller on it for crying out right. loud. 
the, the list used to say, uh, you know, what exact time his spot was going to come up. And so we would sit there and watch, and he would record his spots as, uh, you know, as they came up. Like at 8.08, he was going to have, a, uh, he was going to have his spot. We didn't watch the movie. No, but, uh, no, the movies suck. But anyway, anyway, that, <laughs> let's get back to Chuck McCann. Yeah. So right. if you know anything about TV stations, the crews at TV stations will eat anything. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's true. You leave food behind, it's like a dog lapping up scraps. I mean, <laughs> they will go for anything. And they love this guy because at the end of every show, there was this lovely roast beef. Well, the guy went out and he bought a week ahead of time for some roast beef. Uh, and uh, uh, he put it in the refrigerator on set and he left. And not realizing that, of course, after the show, they pull the plug on the refrigerator and store it away for a week until it's next week and they <laughs> plug it back in again. <laughs> so the guy pulls out the roast beef and it smells. <laughs> It smells to high heaven, but he figures it's TV, it's black and white, nobody's going to know the difference. Just because the beef is green doesn't mean anything. So he skewers the thing, and they start doing their little shots every now and then throughout the show. And he says, you see how it's doing? And believe me, you can get yourself a lovely roast beef like this. And they go back to the movie. And the guy then bolts before the movie's <laughs> over to go back home in New Jersey. Uh -oh. And he's on his way to New Jersey when all of a sudden it hits him. Oh, the fucking crew. The crew. He, he does, a, he 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 does a U turn in the Lincoln Tunnel and comes back to the city. And he's, he's pulling up the w -O, uh, WPIX, which is in the Tribune building. Where's that? On, off of Fifth Avenue or something? He pulls up. There's an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> And they're hauling members of the crew out who are complaining of massive stomach and gastric problems. <laughs> That's great. You know, you you ought to try and get your Chuck, your friend Chuck McCann, to uh, do a half hour. He's with written you. me recently. I should probably talk to him. He's he's an interesting character. Oh yeah. I I had had to start for that one. <laughs> what? What you what'd you say, Brian? I said I had I had to stop driving for that one. That was fucking hilarious. Yeah, but it's a great story. It's one of the he, when uh, Ch Chuck told me that story years ago and said it was just priceless and he, way better than the t than the uh, TV guy screw up story uh, that that I have from San Francisco. Do you remember um, when you were growing up in the city? Well, you grew up at, yeah in Marin. You remember a guy doing a, a show? On Channel Eleven, a kid show a guy named who called himself Captain Satellite. Oh, yeah. that was no. I, that, Captain Satellite was um, God. I think I know who the guy was. I think he was a relation of mine. I'm not sure. Pat, uh, uh, no, no, no. Captain Satellite was out of Sacramento. No, oh, no, 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 no. Captain Sacramento <laughs> was out of Sacramento. You're right. Captain Sacto was Sacramento. So Captain Satellite. I'm trying to remember. There was Captain Fortune. On Channel 11. There, yeah, but there was Captain. also Captain Fortune. And I think I was related to Captain Fortune. Well, uh, the good Captain Satellite, he was at Channel 11. Yeah. KTVU, I think, with the yeah. calls. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that was the station I worked for. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, he was asked to... Oh, no, no, no. I worked... I, excuse me. I worked for KB, KBHK. Channel 12 on most systems. You're 44, right? Four, channel 44. Or 36. Yeah. yeah. No, 44. Did the Cal one or? Uh... Can, I think the Channel 44. 36 I also worked for at one point. Okay. Well, 44 was owned at one time, I think, uh, by the folks that owned the first station I worked at. Bob KS March. Yeah. Bob March was his name. Well, uh, uh, Channel 44 was owned by Chris Craft Industries, the boat oh. people. Oh, well, yeah. anyway. And that's his name, Chris Chris Kraft. No, it, no, it wasn't. <laughs> well, well <laughs> Captain Satellite was asked to be the Grand Marshal of the Contra Costa County Fair one year. Mm -hmm. And like so many people in our business... By the uh, way, before you finish this, is this an alleged story or is this no, known no, for a fact? No, this, this is a real story. Okay, because a lot of these things become legend, you know. Because <laughs> it, it, it not only made the paper, but, I'll, but when I tell you what the guy had to do... Uh, like so many people in our business, the captain, shall we say, liked to 
make sure that he tanked up before he took off. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and showed up, showed up drunker than a skunk, crashed uh, at one of those kitty uh, uh, Dodge car rides, threw up over somebody. It made the newspapers, and that was over the weekend. Channel 11 made him go on the air and apologize for his misbehavior, which I which I remember seeing as a kid because I was thinking, what the hell did the son of a bitch do that they're making him apologize? Because I hadn't read the uh, Saturday or, or the Sunday paper rather about what he did, and I was thinking about uh, the Emmys and poor Sean Spicer, who is now having to apologize. Uh, for his misdeeds of misleading the press and the American people. He should be made to do that like Captain Satellite well, had wait, to wait, do wait, for wait, a whole I, You know something? I don't think there was anything wrong with Sean Spicer being on the Emmys. I think that it shows him a man of great humor about himself and able to laugh at, at that situation. Uh, I, have think, I think it's that everybody so, has it so out for him and quite frankly, I'm, I take pity on Sean Spicer. I mean, this man had the worst fucking job in America. Imagine being an apologist. They should Donald have had Trump. Melissa McCarthy show up on the set, too, and say, no, I'm Sean Spicer. <laughs> no, she supposedly... She was there. She, yeah, but she, she supposedly there, but avoided him afterwards. Yeah. Avoided yeah. him. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, I, I just think that uh, we should take a little pity on Sean Spicer. You know. But do we really need to be um, trying to rehabilitate the guy so soon? You know why McCarthy uh, Nobody's didn't trying to uh, rehabilitate want to talk to him? him. Why? Because Sean Spicer stole her act. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it got uh, it killed her act because he got fired. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I I think that uh, Spicer. You know, was only doing what any press secretary does. They all are apologists for the for the for the Oval Office. You know, they are all there to kind of make people believe that things are better than they really are. And if your boss gives you marching pa uh, uh, papers and says, uh, "Hey, there was a big that was the biggest crowd ever for an inauguration," you go in that room and you say it because that's your job. <coughs> and Who's and he and he said that as much as that he said. You know, I was told to say that. He said that was my job. I w took the marching orders and I did them. You know, there's got to be a red line, though, Alex. Well, I mean, there's got to be be a red line, but you know, I don't know that the press secretary has to deal with that red line. I think the president and the people yeah, around him should deal with if that. We, line. If we go to war, we got to trust the press secretary and the whole White House. Did you hear Nicole Wallace? She worked for George Bush in the mm -hmm. White House. She said, don't ever, ever feel sorry for somebody working in the White House. It's the best job in the country. They just, it's their choice to be there. Who is the new press secretary? Isn't she a good-looking 23-year-old woman or something? <laughs> Sarah Huckabee? Are you talking about no. Sarah Huckabee? Oh. No, no. She no. Hope your it's ass. Hope no, it's Hope, Hope somebody. Hope Hicks. Hope Hicks. Oh, oh, name is Hicks. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, the question, Bill, is how long should she be press secretary? I don't think she's said anything. Uh, has she ha had any conferences? Mm -mm. Give her time. Nope. Give her time. Yeah. She's going to be acting. I don't think. I don't. Or, I don't know if she's going to be permanent. It's oh. unclear. Five will get you ten. Well, she's probably an intern if she's only twenty-eight. <laughs> uh, is she twenty-eight? I I thought she was younger than I, that. She's well, no, I think she's twenty-eight now. Oh. Five will get you ten. That Trump. She was only eighteen when she started dating Trump, though. Oh, great line! And didn't she get hired on The Apprentice? Did she? No, was... I don't, I, no. I think she worked for the Trump Org. Yeah. Yeah. Well, most people who uh, win The Apprentice get a job with the Trump or uh, Trump or Trump. Yeah, or I don't think she was on it, but she might. Have, I don't think so, but she might have been. Oh. Yeah, wasn't she the the front desk? You know, the one thing I, for, I forgot to talk to Penn Jillette about was he he's intimately aware of Donald Trump because he did two I think two seasons of The Apprentice. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah, you could have asked him. Yeah, I, I failed to get uh, to that. Isn't he uh, uh, share my political views? Doesn't he? No. 
No, uh, he's not uh, no, conservative. He, he, no, he's a, he's a, he's a uh, uh, what do you call libertarian? Oh, libertarian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm sure he, you know, even the libertarians think that you know your boy is a fool. You know? uh, I, I don't think so. He was uh, he was a star today in my eyes. Oh boy, you would have given him a, if he was there. You would have given him a, a good hand job, right? But on the yeah. other hand, I liked your uh, your your work too. <laughs> hey, hey Phil, I have one comment about. Uh, well, and apparently, I wasn't the... doing it right. <laughs> What? I, don't, I only have one comment about Trump's speech, Phil. Yeah. It's some of Putin's best writing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it did kind of remind me of him a bit, you know. Uh, yeah, well, he's doing exactly what Putin wants. He's just stirring up the pot, making the, you know, they're doing military exercises in Europe, and uh, Putin's flexing his muscle, and Putin's going to get away with all this stuff, and Trump is just a distraction for America and now the world. I think that's reasonable that Putin's doing the military exercises because NATO is doing military exercises and they won't let him in. You know, uh, I, I want to know so who was, hacked Equifax. Was that the Russians? We don't know, do we? No, nah, it was probably the North Koreans. Well, it's I mean, possible. It's I mean, quite possible. If, if you're going to hack Equifax, you're not going to hack, hack Equifax for the names and numbers of, of people. You're going to hack Equifax to bring it down. You know, you and I, so I don't, I, I, I don't think that's something Russia would do. What, what's that? <laughs> what's that? I, I tell you, I'm talking to you. Is that your phone? <laughs> that's what it is. What? That's yep. Kim Jong Un. I'm oh. having flashbacks <laughs> again. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. You know, you know I, by the way, by the way, him calling Kim Jong Un Rocket Man isn't exactly insulting. It's not insulting. It's not insulting. It doesn't sound insulting to me. Sounds. It sounds like it to me. It diminishes and uh, uh, Kim Jong Un's uh, power. I love space and the exploration of space. And if somebody called, they used to call me Moon Rocks Bennett for crying out loud. I, I have I a friend school. on Facebook that changed their profile to Elton Jong Un. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, how many here find that Rocket Man isn't exactly a terrible term for him to use? It's not that pejorative. Uh, it's, it's, it, it, it diminishes Kim Jong Un. What, 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 what do you? What do you? First, uh, uh, Brian, what did you say? Well, I just said. Uh, Pithy, pithy wise, goof. The words goof, goofy and insipid come to mind. Yeah, uh, uh, well, Jack. You know what he really meant, Alex. You know what he really meant. What? He meant to call him Minuteman, but he got <laughs> messed up. Well, anyway, uh, uh, Jack. Yes. Well, I don't find it uh, insulting, but what I hope Kim Jong Un will start doing is calling Trump the Great Orange Ape. The Cheeto in charge. Cheeto okay. in charge. That's a good one. Scrotus. You know something? I hate to say this, but I actually think Kim Jong Un has a little more class than that. You know what the problem is, Jack? True. You know, in North Korea, they've never seen Cheetos, so they don't have the reference. Oh, uh, uh, don't don't worry. Uh, uh, the basketball player brought him some. Uh, yeah. oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, with, with his waistline. Yeah, I'm sure he's in five and a few. I mean, you know. Rotman may have told Kim Jong Un about the great black tradition of the dozens. Yeah. Notice the black uh, the blank faces. Your mama is so fat. <laughs> she's so fat. She's so fat. Breast give powdered milk. Did anybody watch the brink with Jack Black? Uh, no. Yeah, that was what. what? The Brink? It was on HBO. It was about, uh, he was uh, like a, a secretary at the embassy in North Korea, and he gets involved with Asif Manvi trying to uh, keep a nuclear war from starting. It, it's a pretty good series. I, I wish they'd bring back season oh, two. Oh, The Brink. Yes, I remember that vaguely. I think uh, HBO, That was pretty funny. HBO didn't believe in it very much. You know. No. They well, isn't it funny how fiction sometimes precedes... Reality? Yeah. Yeah. 
learning yeah. learning to love the bomb and stop worrying or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Strangelove. Wow. Well, anyway, uh, it's, uh, you know, I mean, uh, 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 I... Uh, I just think that Rocket Man is not a terrible pejorative to be doling well, out. You associate it with uh, with uh, Elton John and the no, song. No, it's not that. And, in, I know it's not that. It's just that I don't see where it's pejorative. Yeah. You know, when, you when know, he calls somebody like Crooked Hillary, that is a pejorative. Okay, <clears throat> but Rocket Man is not a pejorative. It's like he's almost saying. Because you're into science, you're an asshole? Is that what he's saying? Well, he said Rocket Man was on a suicide mission. Yeah. In front of the world. Yeah. Uh, That's what yeah. kind of... But notice important. how... And notice, he is. Notice how... Oh, really? He is. You yeah. really think that? You yeah. really think that? I think Kim Jong-un is pushing the envelope, and he is on a suicide and mission knows, because and he, knows, he, you know he why? thinks he's tougher he, than he no, really is. He no, he doesn't think he's tougher than he really is. I think he's a hell of a lot tougher than Trump. I think he, you know, if you know, I hope that Kim Jong Un says, "Okay, before you send eighteen-year-old boys to do your fighting, me and you downtown Ho Chi Minh City, two blocks, <laughs> one in the pipe, one in the clip." Let's he, Let's you know, you're, you're, you're too Jeffersonian. He'd get his uh, ass kicked. <laughs> you know, uh, I think what he would do is he'd park a couple of uh, carriers right off the coast, uh, and uh, he would launch enough missiles. And Kim Jong-un should say, that's pussy. Yeah. Real leaders face each other a mano a mano. Uh, what he'll do is he'll take out all his little silos. And and, and, and and Un should say, if you do that, that just shows you have no courage, no conviction, and very small And balls. also, you do not make threats you're not willing to follow up on. And, well, how does uh, he know whether he's willing or not? Well, how, if the, the fact of the matter is he's going to take the chance that... Uh, that uh, Trump isn't going to do anything, and I he think, backed, and I think he's right. I think he'd be right he, in that assumption. He backed down, un backed down on as soon as uh, Trump came down on him about the uh, Guam wait thing. Minute. He backed. And, wait a minute. Hold on a second. He Trump back backed down on his wall, on his wall. No, no, not Trump. I'm talking about Kim Jong Un. Trump when he said that he was going to. We've seen Trump back down on more things than Kim Jong Un. I don't know. And that Kim Trump Jong Un and, and Kim Jong Un said, "Well, maybe we were just going to fly the missiles near there," but he's still firing missiles. He's still doing provocative things, no matter what Trump said. So Trump didn't stop him from doing anything. He well, only encouraged him in his bad behavior. Now, if we were Japan and they flew a, a missile over Jap over Japan. Don't you think that that's an act of war? No, I'd say that's good uh, entertainment. You know, watching. Well, uh, uh, Kim Jong Un is so provocative. He's got the Japanese rethinking their whole pacifism thing. Ah, uh, it's good. Well, that's what Trump it, said they should do. It wasn't so good last time they got rid of their pacifism. Yeah, but it's it's not directed against us, and I don't think it ever well, would. Well, but it could. Well, but it's just. It's going to be, we're in a nuclear age. Anything that happens anywhere is going to be directed against everybody. Trump. You know that there was earthquakes after that hydrogen bomb test in North Korea? Yeah. There was earthquakes. In the, now, do you know there was an earthquake an hour ago in New Zealand? Well, there was the one in Mexico. And I think there was one, in, wasn't the one on yeah, LA? It didn't have anything to do with those underground missiles. I'm no, telling no, no, you. I know, but it's, it's like the ring of, it's all on the ring of fire. No. No, I don't think the Mexi no, not? I don't think Mexico's is in the ring of fire. Oh, they're not. Okay, I'm gonna be wrong. City. I'm gonna be wrong. I it, it, it is in the ring of fire. The... I believe so. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. And Phil, what's so good about being provocative? You know, what are we going? It is. I think that uh, he uh, that Kim Jong Un is going to be put in this place, and that uh, I... well, as soon as you get the rest of the world cutting him off. And he can't get, here, here, here's he can't a, here, get even a bag of here, Cheetos. Here's how you go. Here's how it goes. Well, he, he, nobody's helping him anyway that much. Um, Iran, but, Iran, is uh, Iran is helping him. Huh? Iran is helping him. China's, China's helping. helping him, too. China has had more trade last year than they did the year before. Yeah, well, it, it, here's, here's, here's how uh, he's going to do it, how he's going to get tough Trump. Rocket man, rocket man, <laughs> rocket <laughs> man, <laughs> rocket man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that his sounds idea. like Jerry Lewis doing uh, Rocket Man. Yeah, no. 
Hey, I got to get ready to do a program. Phil, call us. Nice. Everybody yeah. else wants to, might as well. We'll continue the same conversation here in about three minutes. Okay, yeah. get lost. Have a good time tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Anyway, um, uh, but that that about almost uh, wraps it up for us here as well. You know. Um, uh, I, I want to thank uh, Brian, who's uh, dr- still driving, uh, and and Phil, who is not driving, and Kevin, who is sitting in his apartment, uh, his house rather, like he normally sits in ha- his house. And uh, thank you very much, Mike, wherever you are. Of course, Tony out in Queens, and Tim, thank you so much for joining us uh, this Alex. evening. Uh, I am driving. What? I am driving what? everybody crazy. Is that That's right. correct. Anyway, everybody wave, oh, wave goodbye. Much. Wave goodbye, everybody. Bye. Oh, there you go. There goes the citizen panel, those little little, little wonderful group of people that we have. Um, and uh, let me see here. Let me uh, bring up the music a little bit. And just you and I talk for a second while I tell you to stay tuned next over most of this same gab net for the... Um, um, uh, uh, the in- intersection with Jack and Amy, and after that it'll be connections at uh, one o'clock in the morning, Eastern all Eastern Daylight Time, because I live here and I'm the I'm the boss of the place, so I make the time. We'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same station in life. If you happen to be in Hong Kong and you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. Bye, everybody.